the introduction to Lean, Six Sigma, and Operational Excellence. This is an easy to understand video to answer the question, what is Lean, what is Six Sigma, and what is Operational Excellence? And it's presented by Caldwell's and Associates. And we specialize in operational excellence and business critical problem solving. We provide consulting, Lean Six Sigma consulting, operational excellence consulting. Uh, we also provide standard and custom training around Lean Six Sigma and operational excellence. We also provide mentoring. We want to mentor our customers because we think that's a key factor in success. And if you become a lean transformational customer, we'll give you a lifetime free mentoring because we know it's that critical. And you can understand this as we move on to define lean and why we do it that way and define operational excellence. Our experience cover a wide range of industry. We've been in aerospace, automotive, healthcare, medical devices, pharmaceutical, quite a few, just to name a few of them. So let's talk about this introductory video on what is lean, what is Six Sigma, what is operational excellence. As you can see in front of you, is here is our uh, agenda for today. This is a very simplified video so you can get a very good understanding. Uh, we're going to start off with what is lean? And we're going to say what's not lean? Lean is not only a toolbox. They have tools within lean, but lean is not a toolbox where you can just get different uh, concepts and principles and use them. It's, it's way above that. Uh, another thing lean is not, lean is not about cost improvements. It's about continuous improvements. That's critical because what I've found in my experience, and you know my, in my team, we, we've had experiences over 25 to 30 years. So what we found is when companies go after cost improvements, what happened is you sub -optimize. Because one place you may be a cost reduction, but if you look at the pipe, the full value stream, you may be costing yourself in another area. So it's very important not to go after just cost improvement, but continuous improvement so you can see the tool, the total value stream. So let's look at the definition. Here's the definition of lean. Beginning with design, then extending into the factory and ending with the customer. Lean is the process of removing waste from all aspects of the business enterprise. Very key. And this was founded and brought in by Toyota Production System. Okay? And let's break it down. Let's break that definition down and, and get a bet so we can get a better understanding. If you look at the beginning of the definition, beginning with design, that's at the start, when the product design starts. That's from, you know, when the concept is, we haven't even started producing it. Then you go into the factory and all the way to the customer. So it's that whole value stream. That's what we call a value stream. So we look at this total value stream from birth to end to when it's purchased and we find out where the waste is and we eliminate that. And that's what you'll see here, removing the waste from all aspects of that total value stream and is done with a lean culture. And it takes everyone. Not one person can do it, not just a lean expert, not just a black belt, the master black belt. It takes the whole corporation or company to do it. So let's look further at this what is lean? As we said before, lean is a culture. And uh, in the book Lean Thinking uh, by James Warmack and Daniel Jones, they came up with that concept of lean thinking. Now to have everybody involved, everybody's got to be a lean thinking. 
So at some point in your organization, everybody's got to be trained, everyone has to have some type of understanding of lean. And there's different degrees depending on your role. So what we've learned is lean is not just a tool set. Lean is a culture. Lean takes everyone. Lean is eliminating waste. Lean is a philosophy. Lean is a culture. Now that we understand that lean is a culture, it's going to take time. And what we have in front of us is a chart depicting the amount of time, the average amount of time a company would have to develop the culture. So the, in order to get a lean culture, you got to start a lean journey. And on that lean journey, you want a lean journey that focus on your people. And that way you'll ultimately in three to five years have a lean culture. If you focus on lean tools and the toolkits, what will happen, it will fall off. It will never develop the culture you need. If you use lean as a quick fix where you're looking at cost reductions and we want to save money, it's going to just, you're going to get a peak and then it's going to fall off rapidly. So you don't want that. So what this chart is showing you is the best way to sustain lean over time is to develop that lean culture and go on the lean journey. And in the lean journey, some of the benefits from it is you'll get improved throughput. You'll get reduced inventory. You will get some of the saving operational reduction in expenses that you're looking for, but you're going to do it holistically. That's the big difference. You're going to get productivity improvements and you're going to get quality improvements. So here are just a laundry list of things that you'll get and benefits. Now, let's talk more about this lean journey. It's not a short term solution, obviously. It's a long journey. Uh, if you think about it and you talk to people that work in Toyota, they'll tell you they're still on their lean journey, which started in 1945. Motorola started Six Sigma in 1986, okay? Lean transformation, in the book I was telling you about lean thinking with Warmack and Daniels, they talked about the lean journey taking five to six years. So, and depending on the size of your company, it could take five to six years if you're a big corporation, or it could take two to three if you're a small company. Lean journey is never ending. That is very, very important. And that's why we offer that free, if you do a lean transformation, the free monitoring. Because of this, we will always mentor you and monitor you if you select us as a potential consultant for you for your lean transformation. Because we recognize it's never ending and free of charge. Remember, that's free of charge. So here are some concepts of eliminating and identifying waste. There's eight waste, and in Japanese term, they call it muda. And they look at it as eight sins of business. The first one is unnecessary motion. Anytime an operator or a employee is moving unnecessarily, then that's a waste. The next one is waiting. Somebody waiting at the copier or somebody waiting on parts. That's a waste. You got to figure out how you can eliminate these delays. And then excessive inventory. I don't know how many times in my career I've went to companies and seen obsolete parts, warehouses. I mean warehouses of obsolete parts. Need to turn that into cash because if it's obsolete, you can't do nothing else with it. Uh, transportation, and if you, you know, as I go through this and you think about your company, think about the waste areas and the areas that I mentioned here and if, if that's something that you need to work on and make improvements. Transportation, unnecessary movement of material. If you're taking material from one building to the next building and bringing it back, that's unnecessary movement. And then defective part. Man, this is, this is one that hits, if you get them out of your, your shop and get them in your customer hand, can hurt. 
okay, defective parts, you want to stop that at the source. And that's what lean teaches you. So these are all ways. Overprocessing. Overprocessing is one of the biggest ways, okay? But when you overprocess stuff, you end up doing more than you necessarily need. And overproduction. Producing too many, the just in case, opposed to just in time. And the one that, of the eight wastes that came when we came to America with lean was the talent waste. Uh, my father was a GM uh, auto worker and I'm proud of him and he did a great job and he was a great father. But he used to tell me, you know, there were times when he felt like he had to leave his, his brain at the door. This is back in the 60s and 70s, okay? So that's one of the reasons what you don't want to do. You want to make sure all your employees are contributing and feel that they can contribute. That's very important. And all of these lead to missed opportunities, missed business opportunities. So that's lean, that simple version. Now here's a simple version of Six Sigma. What is Six Sigma? From a simple explanation, Y is a function of X. And what that is saying is Y, which is the outcome of what you're looking at, some type of result, is a function or depends on the activity of X. Okay? So X drives the performance of that outcome. All right? So that's the simplest way to define, define it in the tools. Now let's look at an example. Okay, let's, let's, let's explain it a little further. I said y is a function of x. So what that means is y is an equation of x values. Okay, now let's look. Let's take an example. Say if we're selling shirts, okay, and we want to keep track of the percentage of good shirts that we sold. So X would be the number of sold shirts not returned. So those are good shirts, okay? Those are our good shirts. So we got some number that's gonna be returned for some reason, maybe quality. But let's, in this example, let's say that we have sold 100 shirts. Two of the shirts were returned. So X actually equals 100 shirts sold minus the two that was returned, which is 98 good shirts. That's X. So let's go back to our question and our Y is a function of X. See the symbol? It looks like, I know it looks like uh, algebra, but it's simple equations. Don't get panic over that. So we, all we do is use a simple division in the percentage equation. So X will be our top of our divider and uh, the total shirt sold would be at the bottom, the denominator, okay? So it's just simple division, just like a fraction times 100. Then from there, we, we, we substitute the values. We put the 98 shirts that were good and the 100 shirts that we sold total, and then we multiply that by 100. So you multiply that out, and you come up with 98%. So that's like a good number, right? 98% of the shirts that you sold the customers kept. So we would be happy. We would say, hey, that's an A. So let's look at the definition of Six Sigma. The definition of Six Sigma is a set of statistical techniques and tools for improving the process to manufacture or provide services at a first-time yield, quality-loving, 
level of 99.9966, all right? Free of any defects, all right? So what that's saying is, and let's translate it into a million parts. A million parts means if you sold a million shirts, you want to only have 3.4 return. So that's, that's a big number. That's, that's so much different than just the 99, 98%. So if we were making parts instead of selling shirts, or even if you're selling shirts and you're selling a million different type, right? You still want to be down in the 3.4. You want everybody to accept them and make the money and everybody's happy. Your company is going world class. This is world class standards. So what Six Sigma does is if you're outside of those parameters and you're producing at 20 to 80 percent uh, good sales, this is the type of universal method that you look at, all right? And you look at the limits. Uh, if you want to be within the 99.9996 versus the 92 or 98 or 85, you would have upper and lower limits for good parts and bad parts. And how you want to make sure that you're within the tolerance of what they call Six Sigma. And what the black belts and green belts do is put you in that range of your tolerance range in order so you can produce at a quality level and, and get that number to the 99 or the 3.4 parts per million. That only if you make a million parts or you produce a million things or you got bank statements and bank transactions, you, want, you only want 3.4 or less errors. You don't want a lot of errors because they're dealing with people's money, okay, if you're in a bank. So it's the same thing in service as it is in working in production and parts. So let's kind of look at this as in respect to your product, parts per million, or transactions in banks, service, okay, or Look at it from a hospital perspective and the number of uh, different surgeries that you have. You want to operate in, not at a 99% or 97%, because see, if you had a million different operations or close to it, you're going to have a lot of parts or, or different patients that are not going to get good results. Okay, so what this chart is saying is, let's look at 97.73, that line there. That means if you do a million transaction in a bank, or you produce a million um, different parts, you're going to actually have your uh, a 3.5 Six Sigma level. That means the number of defective parts you're going to have is 22,700 parts that are going to be defective. Okay? So, a 98 and a 97 in a million is not a good thing. Okay? You want to make sure you're close to 100%. The closer you are to 100%, that's why it's worth, these are world-class numbers, okay? Now, I know everybody don't work in that type of uh, quantity, but those, that, those companies that do, you really need it. So let's go back to the definitions. Lean. Lean begins with design, extended all the way through the entire enterprise eliminating waste. Six Sigma, statistical technique that brings you to world class. 3.4 parts per million. That's where you want to be. And then bringing them together, Lean Six Sigma, what that is, is the methodology of utilizing Lean and Six Sigma 
and reliance on collaboration with a team, a team effort to improve the performance, using statistics and removing waste, reducing variation in all aspects of the business. And Lean Six Sigma leads you to operational excellence. What is operational excellence is our next subject. And let's talk a little bit about the history of Lean first before we move in there and you'll see how it, trend, it evolved to operational excellence. First we have Ford assembly line method. Henry Ford was a founder. In his, the biggest thing was flow, value stream thinking, efficiency, and point of use. Because prior to Henry Ford, the way cars were made was in one location. One location, they assembled and they brought products and they brought parts to that. So, and he invented the Model T. And the Model T price went down substantially when he went to assembly line. The second major step was at Toyota, the Toyota production cell. Tichi Ono was the leader at that time, wrote the book, The Toyota Production Cell. It's, it's a tough read, but it's a good book because it re reads like a classroom book. But they brought in the lean principles that, and, they, and in this book, he gives, he gives a reference and to Henry Ford. He knows that's where it started, and he picked up the principles. And what they did is took Henry Ford's assembly line from the Model T and figured out ways to make it for a lot of different models, several models. That was the key. And they came up with a lot of concepts. And you'll see later that he was helped by consultants, like all good world-class companies do. And not only that, it's similar to like world-class athletes. They all have coaches. Even the Tom Brady's and uh, you know Muhammad Ali had a great coach. They all, no matter how great, and these are the greatest of the greats. So you look at the Toyota production system, it talks about people. Here we're back to culture again. Customers first, the GIT, okay? And then the long-term perspective. These are just some of the examples that they brought to manufacturing that really helped. They, they got quite a few, as you can see, that laundry list of, of different things. So here's some of the history. We started out how operational excellence was developed started with Frederick Taylor and motion time study, Eli Willie, Whitney with interchangeable parts. Then Henry Ford came along and I told you it was a big major step. And then we had statistical process control. And then Demi and the Toyota production system came involved. Now what Demi was a consultant to Japan, not not only Toyota, Japan. He was one of he's the American a uh, statistician that went over there because after the war no American companies would listen to him so he went over there and helped them with total quality management that's what it was called first some of you young people may not know this but there was a time when the Japanese cars were what we called rust bucket on, on wheel I actually lived that as a, as a young man when we used to watch cars roll down the street we wouldn't buy a Japanese car in the 60s. Matter of fact, they were sold in the 50s. Have you ever seen a, J a Toyota, a 1960 Toyota? You've seen Chevys, but no 1960s Toyota. And the reason being is because their quality was so bad back then. But when Demi went over there and he helped, and Shingo, both of them helped Toyota come up with this Toyota production system. Uh, and then when the crisis hit, the oil crisis in 1973, Americans, look, Americans actually looked for fuel efficient cars for the first time ever. And they started looking at the smaller Japanese cars and they started buying them. And when they found out that they were, the quality was superior, 
more Americans started buying. And then eventually Honda in 79 came over here and started making motorcycles. They were the first Japanese auto company and that started the globalization to come over here in 1979. So Six Sigma was started by Motorola, Bill Smith, in 1989, or 1986, excuse me. And in 89, the first shingle award was given out, okay, to a company, Global Metallurgy, in Ohio. They received the first shingle award. And in 84, we had the gold. Warmack and Daniel wrote their first book, The Machine That Changed the World, which is about Toyota and how they impact. Uh, and then in 1996, we had Lean Thinking. And then from there, we had Six Sigma and Lean come together. And in 2015 time frame, there was a book called The Lean CEO and World Class Operational Excellence came in in the 2013 time frame, 2012. So that's where we are today. Now the Shigo Prize is Operational Excellence. Um, that's one of the areas that we look at and that's how Operational Excellence derived all the way back from the Ford assembly uh, system that he developed, assembly line. Now, if you look at world-class operational excellence, there's three pillars. The first pillar is the design innovation. The main pillar that sits in the middle is the lean and the lean house. Okay, and you'll see the lean house a little later. And the next pillar is Six Sigma quality because you want to be world class. So as you put products and develop new products, as in new services, you want them to go through these pillars because at the end, you're going to end up with excellent products and service. Now the foundation is Kaizen, which equals continuous improvement. They're both equal. Some people like calling it Kaizen, some people like calling it continuous improvement. So let's look a little closer at the three pillars. First, you've got design innovation, where designing, a, designing and development of unique products and services is very, very critical. Then you have the Six Sigma quality, the 3.4 parts per million you want to achieve and strive for to be world class. And then the next one is the lean house, which is the center, the most important one of removing waste from all aspects of the business enterprise and the total value stream. Uh, from a design innovation, a good product to look at is the Tesla. The Tesla uh, not only the Model S, but the other models that they have. They've done a very good job since, you know, introducing this vehicle. The success that they've had, they are the number one um, plug-in electric car in the, in the United States. Uh, now, going back to the Lean House. Lean House is the main pillar, the one that was in the center. Now this is what the house looked like. This is from the Toyota production system, so it hasn't been changed. Uh, they start out with the foundation of their philosophy, customer first, respect humanity, which they respect humanity and their employees. Uh, eliminating waste, we talked about that. Standardization, key performance indicators, very important. And then built-in quality, just in time. They're still using it, still doing it, haven't moved away from it. And maintaining standards, flexible employees because they believe in their employees and motivating their employees. And then Kaizen, or as some people want to call it, uh, continuous improvement. And now, the question is, why must we have lean for our operational excellence because of 
globalization is increasing competition in the market. If you're in a global company, you're going to continue to get increased competition. Also, eliminating wakes makes the jobs easier for your, your workers and your associates. Lastly, uh, not last, but lean is working smarter, not just harder or fast, and we talked about that before. Makes your job more interesting, you have more opportunities to learn, and lean is the essence of world-class operational excellence. So, now that we went through operational excellence, lean, what is lean, what is Six Sigma, I hope this helped you get a better understanding. I hope I was able to simplify it. If you have questions, you can email me personally. My email is up there. Also, my, my, my phone number if you need to call and talk to me. Uh, also, you can, our website is shown. So you can, you can check out our website if you want more information. We do provide Lean Six Sigma class, Yellow Belt class, Black Belt class, Green Belt class, and you know we also do individual classes at, at companies' facilities. We can provide the facilities or we can come to you. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call us. And thank you for your time and have a blessed day.